Compound with bound combining forms. We have studied compounds and we have seen that generally these compounds have free morphemes. But in English language, we find a lot of uh, compounds uh, in which the root or base is bound. And especially such type of compounds are found in uh, scientific and technical areas. And these are called combining forms. These roots and these based are called, which are bound, they are called or known as combining forms. For example, you can have a list of word anthropology, sociology, up to plantigrade. So, you can see that anthro means the human beings and ology means study. So, it can become the study of human beings and you can understand the same on this pattern. The semantic predictability is crucial to the coining of new vocabulary. So, if we are not aware of this uh, semantic aspect, we cannot understand the words, right? So, with the help of sim simple, we know that anthro and ology, we the study of, so we can easily determine their meanings. However, ap apart from containing bound roots, anthropology uh, uh, differs in two other ways from most compounds, uh, compound nouns. Firstly, it has a central linking vowel O that cannot conclusively be assigned to either root. Either we can attach it to anthro uh, or to ology. In this respect, it resembles many combining form compounds. Secondly, Although it is a noun, its stress is not on the first element unless the linking O belongs to, uh, belongs there. So we know that the stress in, uh, in anthropology. So O is attached to per, so that's why the stress is on pa uh, syllable, right? So this is very important. This is an, a, a different aspect or, uh, that is not discussed previously and different from the formation of other compounds which have this bound uh, base or bound root. In this respect, it re resembles monogamy, philosophy, and aristocracy, right? So, on the basis or on the analogy of these words, uh, we can find the existence of O in anthropology. We have already countered bound roots that could function as the base or derivational affixes, affixation, such as odd, it's a, a bound, uh, bound root and it is not found uh, used alone. So we find them in audible, audition, auditory, etc. Some combining form can function in this way too. In other words, the dividing line between combining form and other bound roots is not sharp. However, we cannot very precisely draw a line between the bound uh, combining form and other bound roots. So, uh, for example, if we have the word soci and elector form also occur indeed much more commonly in social and electric. So, here it's very difficult to draw a line, line that where uh, the bound morpheme is found and where it is co uh, combining form. Given that combining forms and the compounds that contain them are so untypical of compounds in general, it is natural to ask how English has come to acquire them. So, they are very difficult to understand. Their structure is very difficult to understand. So, the the question arises that how the Englishman started to use these forms. So, in this way, we find that the, mostly they came from Latin and Greek language. Uh, though deliberate bor um, borings to supply new needs for technical vocabulary that arose partly uh, from the revival of learning in Western Europe in the 15 or 16, I mean, uh, in the Renaissance period, uh, same also came from industrial uh, uh, revolution in 18th century and in its scientific spin-off. So, these type of uh, combining form 
were found more in the period of Renaissance from Greek and Latin language and then later on during the uh, industrialized revolution uh, in 18th century. So these uh, combining forms are bound forms. So they are they they do not resemble much with other type of compounds which are we form or which we find in English language.